All right. Here we are. At now, Raw, like we did with uh, Panel to Panel. All right. This is episode number one, Chirpin' from the Pine, the Game Rage Magazine sports podcast. All things sports. If you're worried, there will be an intro at some point, but just there isn't one today. And we have something of a problem within the building itself. Right. Yeah. I don't know how Perk Angle got into the building, but he's being very problematic. And if he says something, that's completely out of our fucking hands. So yeah, we're we're we have nothing to do with Perk Angle. All right, he he just showed up. I mean, I've called an exterminator. I, I don't think they're coming. So hopefully he doesn't rear his ugly head during this episode. But yeah, we we will condemn him on site and uh, hopefully be rid of him in some manner. Yeah, true. So. This this podcast is going to basically just be obviously about sports. It's going to be everything sports. It's going to be weird autism stats. All right. Weird shit that you might not even fucking knew existed as a stat or what have you. Uh, it's going to be baseball, football, hockey. Maybe basketball when we get a basketball guy on. But we don't really I don't know. I don't know shit about basketball. So, well, I gotta, all I got to say is. This is our first podcast. Yeah. You can't, you, you, we'll find our we'll voices. We'll figure it out. Yeah. We'll find our voices. And I know there's better sports podcasts that uh, no, are more established. No, they're not. There's not any better. There's not. There, yes. There's, you gotta give us a shot. Yeah. You, you gotta fucking, you, got, you can't, you can't fucking throw us under the bus already. I'm not throwing us under the bus, but we'll, we'll get there. We're going to be among the greats. Yeah. Oh, definitely. hundred percent. We just need to get there. You gotta give us a shot. That's right. That's right. We're, we're giving ourselves a shot right now. Yeah. So also, yeah, you're going to we're going to have fucking sound bites. So get fucked. All right. Yeah, we're, we're, <laughs> we're, we're going full sports radio. We we really fucking wanted to do that. I, don't ask me why, because I don't know why. Other than it just it sounds fun. Yeah. And I mean, I like doing fun things. And why not ham it up with this? Fuck it. You know, it, it's going to be silly. It's fucking ridiculous. So just be prepared for that. If you don't like it. I mean, fuck, there's no other options that don't do this. So go fuck yourself. OK, everybody does this. <laughs> so uh, anyways, Today, episode number one, we're doing this literally post the post Super Bowl, right? Yeah, yeah, it's post post Super. The Super Bowl just happened, just finished, several hours ago though. Yes, right? we're, we're deep into the night. We're de- we're we're into Monday morning now at yeah. this point. So, <clears throat> the game itself, I, I wasn't really too excited just to begin with. Just with the Chiefs and the 49ers. two teams I don't already care for. Same here. Don't give a fuck about the 49ers or the Chiefs. I do give a fuck about not wanting the Chiefs to win two in a row. That was I didn't want them to see. And see, I want to see that. I didn't want to see them get two in a row. I felt that the it hadn't been done in twenty years. It didn't need to be done again. It didn't need to be done by them, <laughs> right? I, I just don't like them. I don't like Andy Reid. I don't like fucking Patrick Mahomes. I definitely don't like Travis fucking Kelsey. I don't like any of those guys on that fucking team, man. I like Andy Reid because he took it in the ass for so long. Uh, cause there was a good, pretty much since Belichick went downhill at this point, right? It's ever since Tom Brady left, it's the, the field has been open to every other team to win the Super Bowl, but it's been the chiefs as of, as of late. Right. Right. That, and, and Andy Reed was on the short end of the stick for, he was bridesmaid for, I think at least one Super Bowl with the Eagles yeah. versus the Patriots. So, right. I, I like the guy, but he just, he's, uh, in his, in his late stage of the career, it is cool to see him come out and, and win three Super Bowls, but fuck the Chiefs. Yeah, I agree. Uh, so I was already not kind of giving a fuck about this anyways. The thing that I was most excited about and most looking forward to was the halftime show. So this was the first Super Bowl in history that I really didn't give two shits about the, the game. I wanted to just watch the halftime show. And we're not going to get into that here because this is not the fucking halftime show podcast. It's about we're going to talk about the sport. But if you do want to hear about what the fuck we thought about the halftime show. You can go listen to the other podcast, all gas, no trash slash the game rage music podcast. And you can hear all we did an in-depth analysis of the fucking halftime show. So you can hear our thoughts on that there. Um, so about the game itself, I already was just meh on it. Like I said, and when the game starts and I, I'm watching this shit and I'm also hosting an event essentially here, right? With people and, you know, have people over. So I'm like giving people, I'm half watching the game. 
I'm already drunk at this point because I didn't really need to watch the actual game. So I'm already, you know, I already been like two or three deep and I'm just, you know, whatever. Inebriated. Yeah, quite inebriated. So I basically just was not really paying attention the first quarter. And then I came in and I said, oh, wow, it's, you know, I don't remember what the exact score was at that point. And I was like, oh, wow, it's whatever. It's very low. It it was zero zero first quarter. Right. Yeah. And uh, the first drive, I think Christian McCaffrey fumbles. Yeah. I'm like, oh, this is how the game's going to go. This is how this is happening. (laughs) Yeah. These are two professional sports teams at the height of the pinnacle. I guess that's redundant. They're at the pinnacle of, I guess, competition. They're the two best teams in the NFL as per the playoff standard at this point. Mm -hmm. And now they're vying for the top tier championship to claim who is the best team. And that's how we fucking start off this fucking game with a fumble. Then as we're progressing through the quarter, it, again, like you said, yeah, it's zero zero. I keep popping in and out. I'm just like, Jesus Christ, they haven't fucking scored yet. How is this? It gets into the second quarter and I'm like, Jesus fucking Christ. So the second quarter was this very, very similar, very low. I think, it, I think going into halftime, they were tied, right? It, um, or no, it was 10, three. It was 10. Well, no, San Francisco got a field goal. Right. And then I think uh, they got a touchdown on that. It, on wasn't, the, it wasn't a double reverse, but I think it was a reverse with a flea flicker. Yeah. Uh, and then they got that touch. And that was fucking cool. Yeah. So then they went up 10 zip. And then they were, I mean, obviously you assholes watched this, so you know, what basically. And then, and then it went 10, three. And then, uh, cause the chiefs kicked a field goal, right. I think before halftime. So they got on the board. You know, what's gonna be amazing is, what? uh, we just watched the game and, and fucking we, we already, yeah. we I don't already, give a fuck. I, I didn't give a fuck to yeah. begin with. So. Gonna, okay. So this is going to be a loose recollection of yeah. the game itself. This is a Whether loose it's accurate or not. I don't know. I, yeah. And I was already drunk too. So that the, you probably can't hold that against me, Yeah, but I just thought it was white boy day. <laughs> you know, it it wasn't white boy day today. It wasn't. Brock Purdy. He got took, it. Took no, it. Took, took it. it. Yeah. So oh, we'll get to that. But so we go into halftime and I'm like, Jesus Christ, they showed the stats. Uh, obviously, after the halftime show, they showed the stats of the first half. Jesus Christ, Brock Purdy, I think was like, I think he was five for eight and fucking Mahomes was like three for five or so. It was, I was like, you assholes has it. It's been a quarter. Cor- it's been two full quarters and you guys have thrown under 20 passes between the two of you barely into double digits they couldn't get it going like um, fuck the chiefs i mean as amazing as they play because uh Mahomes is that quarterback that can just scramble out of any situation and make a play dude the for the first half i was completely surprised by the fact that uh that uh san francisco had that defense on lockdown i mean they had i mean they had oh yeah the chiefs offense on lockdown for the first half like outright and somehow they managed to fuck it up, you know, and that's one of the things that uh, to, to say is it doesn't really matter how you start. It just matters how you finish because, yeah, yeah they started strong, but they did not finish with that last drive when it went. OK, so third quarter, fourth quarter goes by. They're basically they end up being tied 19 to 19 uh, going into the end of the game. And the conspiracy theorists were already calling for this to be a tie because everybody thinks the NFL is fucking rigged. Right. So everyone was saying prior to this, I saw a lot of conspiracy theories about how this is going to go to overtime. The number that people were saying was it was going to be 13 because that's Taylor Swift's favorite number or some shit. And so it was going to be tied 13, 13 somehow going into the fucking overtime. Well, I mean, it was pretty fucking close. It was 16, 19. 16, 19. Yeah. 16. Well, 19, 19 was the total. Or the score when they went into, um, wasn't it? Or was it 16 I, I think it was 16, 16. Yeah. Okay. So when they went into overtime, it was 16 16. So it was pretty fucking close to that. Now, we go into overtime. I mean, I think the math is not mathing <laughs> because the, the final score of the game was 22 25. Yeah. I don't know. I, math. Dude, I, like I said, we're fucking up the numbers. <laughs> Please stick around. Please give us a shot. Yeah, just got to give us a shot. Yeah, you got to fucking give us a shot, man. Like, we're, we're, we're fucking dumb, okay? We, yeah. Just because we don't know math. We're sports guys. We don't fucking do math. We don't know English, okay? Yeah, let's just say that the, the score was tied. At yeah, the that's all we know. Yeah. For sure we know it was tied, let's okay? That. Let's, that's let's, a fact. Let's go with that. The score was tied. So after this, as this tied score happens, we go to overtime. And 
uh, we fucking they come out and you know the the refs out there again and they're gonna do another coin toss and it was fucking hilarious because he literally looks at the both of them and then he says, "All right, gentlemen, so it's overtime, so we're just basically gonna start a whole new game." And I was like, "Wait, what? <laughs> we're gonna start a whole new game? That's not how this fucking shit works. The score is tied, yes, but each each team gets a possession and then if nobody scores, okay, then fuck." it goes until whoever's sudden death, right? That's basically the rule. It's like sudden death. Whoever the first team that scores after that is, I don't remember how it's, it's all right. Changed. I know it's, for sure. That's it, what it is. Cause I remember them. I read it for sure. I was drunk, but I, you know, I remember that and I know the rules of the overtime in NFL. So, but in regular season, that might be applicable to regular season. They that's how, in, but that's how they did it here at this, at the super bowl. They said, okay, each or no, I think in the regular season, whoever gets the ball first, if they, if score they a don't score, or if they score a touchdown, game over. Then it's over. But if they score a field goal, the other, team. the other team gets a chance to either score a field goal or get a touchdown to win the game. In this one, both teams get an opportunity to score. So even if you're the first team that gets it and you only get a field goal, doesn't matter. You're the other team, or if, say you get the touchdown in the regular season, you would have won the game. But no, now you got to play defense in the Super Bowl. Yeah, that's fair. So, which is fair. That's the only true fair way to do it. So, so both teams would get a possession. So, obviously, so fucking San Francisco wins the toss, and they they took it and they fucking kicked the field goal, and fucking then the Chiefs get it and they do the fucking the shittiest drive I've ever fucking seen. So sloppy as shit multiple fourth down barely fucking getting these that that's what kills me man that is it, it's straight it's can you even say it's luck because he is manifesting it he's making sure. it happen but yeah fuck dude whatever but why you got to push it to the fuck why, how is it that you get to this every time it's the fourth quarter it's the fourth down fourth down fourth down every time during that drive almost they went to fucking four downs and just when you thought Man, the Chiefs because or the the 49ers defense had been fucking holding them this whole game. And then once they got into the red zone, I literally watched those guys die inside. The fucking 49ers defense just gave up. That is the fucking shit. I cannot believe I witnessed that on television. I will say when it came <clears throat> to when it came to the last 4 minutes and Yes, obviously San Francisco scored a touchdown. When they got when when Kansas City got the ball, I thought it was over at four minutes when they got the possession uh-huh. and they got the kickoff or whatever. And I'm just thinking, this is going to play out exactly how you imagine it. They're going to drive. They're going to get to the they're going to get to the red zone, and that'll be the rest of it. They they left too much time on the clock. I mean, obviously they got the field goal. They got to the end of the field, but yeah, there was just too much fucking time. I'm like, you can't you can't have fucking Patrick Mahomes be the fucking guy that gets the last drive on the game. That's what ended up doing the men. It was him scoring his fucking a dude. I don't know. Yeah. And, and so I, you know, I was, listen, I was all about bang, bang, Niner gang going into this fucking game just because I'm like, fuck the chiefs. So I was rooting for the 49ers. I have a lot of friends that are 49er fans and <clears throat> I was, you know, supportive of them. But now after witnessing this horse shit, I, I will never root for the 49ers again. Even if they're fucking fighting a team that I hate the most in the NFL, oh. I will I will never fucking root for them. Two things happen. <clears throat> Niners fans molding right now. Oh, yeah. Number two, suicide hotline. Oh, going off the rails. Going off the chain. They're, those Those suicide hotline workers are on overtime right now, and they're having to call in people to come in or to answer phones because it's just ringing off the hook. And... It, it was very sad to see a professional football team entire defense just quit. Just fucking quit. When they got into the red zone and they did that stupid last play where... It was uh, third and he, eight. Yeah, it was third and eight. And he just heh, just flickle, flickles it over. I'm like, I, I literally watched those guys jog. And I, I'm like, nope, this is... it's, it's, it's Get the fuck out of here. I thought they were going to pound it. <clears> in when, uh, well, actually, they shouldn't have pounded it in. They should have given it one extra chance at taking a shot at the field. Uh, and then fourth down, you go for the field goal. If nothing, if it, well, it ended up working out. They, right. they scored. Yeah. yeah. They just, they ended up just scoring the touchdown to win the game. So I just, I couldn't fucking believe that shit. And it makes me, it, 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 it baseball is my number one sport. And I think part of the problem with 
NFL is that it's just local to us. It only yeah. matters. It only matters to us. And that's why I think baseball is better because it's it opens itself up to other countries and shit. Like you get Dominican players, you get players from Cuba, Mexico, Japan, Japan, fucking Korea and shit. And this type this this fucking Super Bowl, I'm just like, God damn, I love baseball. Yeah. Yeah, that's I, I kind of agree with you. It's 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 a lot, it's a lot more interesting. I also love hockey more now. Yeah, too. me too, man. Hockey's fucking so awesome. Yeah. So last night, uh, Ottawa played the Toronto Maple Leafs just yeah. to go on a quick segment. Right. Yeah. yeah. Ottawa had uh, a five on six. Toronto was down by uh, one. It's four three. Somebody breaks loose from Ottawa, scores an open net slapper. Yeah. Aggressive, aggressive o- open net slapper, disrespectful, disrespectful. Oh my god, there was no, there was no love on that one. Oh, none whatsoever. Yeah. So then I forget who comes from the Toronto Maple Leafs and blindside cross checks the dude. <laughs> yeah, I, I've never seen anything like that, dude. That was straight fucking odious. That was egregious. Oh yeah, I, I couldn't believe it, and it ended up being on all the subreddits, like the sports subreddit, yeah, yeah. which is for all sports, NHL, and. uh I, I forgot what else, but I don't even know how you can defend that dude. That shit was wild. I couldn't. I couldn't believe it. Oh, Anyways, man. yeah. So, that, that, but just to go with this tangent for a second, that that's what hockey's about, man. It's about if you do some shit like that, that's disrespectful. Retaliation. You're gonna get fucked up. You better. You better know and be ready for this because that's exactly what you're gonna get. And quite frankly, it's what you deserve. Yeah, I mean, dude. As much as I love football, it leaves stuff on the table. Like yeah. the violence. Oh yeah. You get all that in hockey. Yep. It's a fast game. And yeah. it's just as fast as football. <laughs> oh yeah. And it stays, it's nonstop action, dude. It's beautiful. Yeah. It's the fastest. And, it's, and they're allowed to fight. It's the greatest show on ice. It is. It fucking is. Uh but anyways, to go back to the Super Bowl real quick. So all like I said, all the conspiracy theories were that the storyline demands that the, the Chiefs win, right? And I was I was I believe in that. I believe in the fucking storylines. I think that that's kind of what was supposed to happen regarding this whole Taylor Swift fucking Travis Kelsey nonsense, which is fucking absolute horse shit. How many times, uh, Adam, did you say that they showed her on fucking TV? 14, something like that. 14 times from the start of the game itself to the end. Yeah. Fucking 14 times. She was on that fucking screen on an, on an NFL game, not including the ceremony itself, which ended up, oh. ended up turning to every other shot being. Yeah, it was just going to her. And so I think that the conspiracy theories are are t- turning out to be correct. And I'm not defending this. I'm not. I'm, oh, no, I'm indifferent to that. You, you, hey, you know, go on your whole thing. We need, we need to get a conspiracy theory. Fucking like uh, like an <laughs> Alex Jones fucking uh, uh, black helicopters and the turn the frogs gay. That's what we need to get <laughs> when I go on these rants. We need to get one of those sound bites. Yeah. Um. But essentially, my theory is that is that now the NFL wants to they want to erase or they want to overshadow the the legacy and the shadow that the Patriots have cast on the NFL for the last 20 fucking years. So they need something to get a new dynasty going. Right. So they just the Chiefs just won back to back first time in 20 years since the Patriots did it. I have a feeling that next year with all the shit that Travis Kelsey was talking at the end of the thing, uh, talking about going back for a third. <clears throat> I think that the fucking chiefs are going to win a third, a third time in a row. They're going to win next year. And then I also think that because of the Taylor Swift, I'll put fucking, them in four. Yeah. They'll have four total, but three in a row. I don't know who fuck has anybody. No one in the nope. modern era has done that. At no, least dude, that's, that's fucking nonsense. Yeah. That will be nonsense. There's no fucking way that they could get that. But if you want to fucking cast a new dynasty, this is how you fucking do it. And I think with the, with the heat that they have drawn right now with this whole Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey romance or whatever you want to call it. I have a feeling that they are going to push for the Chiefs to at least be in the Super Bowl because as long as they the two of them are still together, right? Which I think that's 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 what they're gonna for sure be together. And I think Taylor Swift also plays halftime next year. This is carbon steel plot armor, dude. Yeah, that's what it is. That's what they, that's what they have right now. And they are setting themselves up to where, like I said, it's gonna be the perfect story. Next year, she's gonna play halftime at the Super Bowl. Travis Kelsey is going to win his third Super Bowl in a fucking row. And or wait, was he with the Chiefs when they won the first one? Yeah, right. Who? Kelsey. 
he Travis was, Kelsey? Yeah, he was. I with, think he's been his. I think he's been a chief as long as uh, yeah. It's like the whole the whole time as long as Mahomes at least, right? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. So he's won. Yeah, he's won the other. So this will be his fourth Super Bowl next year, third in a row. And then he's going to fucking they've been to, they will have been together for seemingly long enough. And then that's when he's going to fucking show up. Just performed the halftime show. He'll win the Super Bowl for set a record third time in a row. And then he's going to fucking propose to her. And that's going to be America's fucking storyline. That's what I think is that's what I'm calling it right now for next year's for the 2025 Super Bowl, which I don't remember where it's at or even if they've announced it, but. That's what I'm calling. So if, if if the NFL is rigged, this is the plan drawn up, just like a WWE yep. storyline. It's just like wrestling. It's a fucking straight up storyline. And the storyline demands that this is what happens. My favorite part of this is my favorite <laughs> is the my favorite night. My favorite. Oh, my God, dude. What am I trying to say? I don't know. Fucking idiot. Uh, let me give my balls a tug. Yeah. Uh, yeah. President Biden. Oh, yeah. The dank. The, yep. The, the dank, dank meme. The, the dank dark red. Dark. dark Dark, dark, <laughs> dark Brandon. Brandon meme. He posts it on his shit and says, "Just like we drew it, just up. like we drew it up." That was my favorite. What thing. Yeah. the fuck is? Go- Do we live in a simulation right now? I love it. That is fucking so great. Just trolled everybody. Yeah. Uh, so, what else do you have to add for the Super Bowl? Um, Super Bowl itself. Basically, I am losing interest in the NFL at a rapid rate. <laughs> I don't know if that's. Uh, and, and again, I was I was in favor of the Lions storyline. The Lions, that's a good storyline. Oh man, the team it's itself the, was good from top to bottom, like oh, offense and right. defense. They and, were great. Yeah, and it's a team that's comprised. Every coach on that team is a former player, and that's one of the unique things about the Lions that I really fucking like. And that's one of the things that really got me interested in them. I'm not saying I'm gonna start wearing fucking Lions gear, but at the end of the day, that's an interesting storyline that I could support if they were to go to the Super Bowl and I could really g- legitimately root for them to win because that's that's some shit that you want to see those guys do well. Yeah, and in having Jared Goff here in Los Angeles for a time, or at least for the start of his career as yeah. a Los Angeles Ram, and then I think many people had written him off. Oh, yeah, they definitely did. And probably called him washed up. But he goes to Detroit and... Turns it all around. They have a solid team. I mean, I somewhat had a bit of a bias towards them about them making the playoffs and potentially making it to the Super Bowl. Uh, I had a few of the players from the Rams, the Rams, Detroit Lions, uh, Jameer Gibbs, the, the running back. They had a really good set of running backs. Like yeah. Montgomery and Jameer Gibbs. And then Amon Ra, St. Brown, also the wide receiver liked him as well. So I was kind of hoping they were going to take it all the way. And man, we got the 49ers. <laughs> we did. We got this shitty 49ers and chiefs fucking super bowl. So I'm hopeful that next year, at least maybe the lions will be in it, even though I don't, I mean, well, it's just, it's probably not going to fucking happen. I'm this, this is like the, so in 20 years, right? This is the first time that assuming the 2025 season, once it starts or 2024, 2025 season. Yeah. Uh, in, in nine months or nine months from now or however long it takes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, shit. If Mahomes is on the cover of, because you know, like the Madden curse and shit. Oh, yeah. Well, he's been on Madden before. Yeah, but now it's like, now it's all now going it's out the window because uh, yeah. if they go for the third one and they end up making the playoffs and all that shit, then I don't know. I'm kind of, I'm kind of, it's just weird because a lot of teams, when they win the Super Bowl, they have like the Super Bowl hangover. They ended up playing. Yeah. They end up playing shit. Right. So yeah. Who the fuck knows if they go back to the Super and Bowl? And they just did it twice in a row. I mean, listen, the the Patriots fucking couldn't do it. So I mean, that's what happened. But who knows? Maybe that's what's that's what's gonna happen. I don't know. I am interested to see. I do love that fucking show on HBO. Uh, fucking the preseason show. Uh, Hard Knocks. Or, yeah, Hard Knocks. I am. I am interested to see who the fuck they get on that this this uh this upcoming season for training camp and then because i do like follow i think that's a fucking great idea to follow some like one team through training camp all the way through to like maybe halfway through the season and then they do the mid they change teams like and they do a mid-season team so it's interesting to see all that shit yeah i haven't seen a lot of them but uh dude the cardinals one was fucking hilarious because that guy ended up getting fired like 
the coach. Oh, fuck, oh, I forget right. what his name was. But he was talking all this shit in the whole thing, talking about, oh, yeah, I got this fucking big ass house. I'm getting all this money. And then literally he gets fired like, fucking like three weeks later. And it was great. But the Lions one was really good. That was the first year, I think, that Dan Campbell was the head coach of the Lions. And that one was fucking great. That's what got me invested in this Lions storyline was because you got to see Amon, Amon Ross St. Brown, fucking uh, that the guy who thinks it's white boy fucking day or whatever, uh, the, the defensive guy. Uh, fuck. He must have thought it was white boy day. <laughs> yeah, it was white boy day for him. All right. Um, <laughs> he's from Detroit. Like, like he's a hometown kid, too. And like, oh, man, it just gets you invested in those fucking storylines yeah the one that i saw was like way back it was it was it was for the houston texans oh yeah, yeah. and this was when vince wilfork the lineman mm-hmm. for yeah, yeah for the patriots he, he got traded over there yeah so i don't know why but they were having uh training camps or whatever and he shows up in fucking boots and overalls like <laughs> It was like one of the funniest things ever, dude. And awesome. I, I didn't get to watch the rest of the thing, but I think it would have been watching just for whatever the bullshit that Vince Wilfork did. Because that guy's a big motherfucker. He's like, oh, yeah. He's a giant dude, man. Yeah. So anyways. All right. Well, I guess that's probably enough football talk for now. I mean, I got really anything else about it. Um, But I don't know. <laughs> Obviously, luckily, we've got baseball season coming up. Yeah. Uh, Fuck me. I, I, oh, I I'll, Jesus. I'll, I'm trying, I'm trying to. Oh, oh God. It's Vin Scully. Is that what you're looking for? Oh, that's right. Uh, it's time for Dodger baseball. And while, <laughs> while we did play that sound bite, this is not exclusive to the, this is not like a Dodger exclusive podcast. No, it's this, not. this is open to just the MLB in general. Yeah. Yeah. But Adam just loves the Dodgers. Yeah. I mean, I hate the Dodgers. I'm, a, I'm an Angels guy, as we all know. But, yeah, baseball's coming up, so that's going to be interesting to see. What, there's a lot of threads going on with baseball right now. Yeah, uh, you've got, I mean, you've got the basically the you know trader of the millennium, Shohei Otani. <laughs> <laughs> Seeing him uh, potentially, I don't know, start or well, he's not going to pitch this year, right? But see yeah. him at least hit for the Dodgers, I guess, as a DH. Yeah, this is, so this is going to turn into the uh, <laughs> the Nippon Sports Report. Yo! <laughs> this is a, a segment that's dedicated to the Japanese players within the MLB. So of the of the ones that we will be covering, it's going to be Shota Imanaga, who signed with the, the Chicago Cubs. Yeah, yeah. Yoshinobu Yamamoto, Dodger. Shohei Otani, Dodger. Trader, yeah. Trader. Yeah, yeah, good. <laughs> <laughs> um, I got to say, dude. This, out of all the teams that I've witnessed in all the years I've been watching the Dodgers, I mean, I've never been this excited for spring training. I mean, dude, I'm I'm making sure that Yoshinobu's eating his cereals, his Wheaties, and yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I you're sending him DMs like, "Hey, man, did you take your fucking protein today? Did you eat? <laughs> did you eat one gram of protein? Or wait, well, they use kilograms, right? So." Fucking! Did you eat one kilogram of protein per kilogram of body weight? You, you son of a bitch! Did you get your javelin throws in? Oh that's yeah, that, that's what he does. Yeah, that that was a real interesting exercise. Uh, I, I I think it kind of makes sense though, because it's like if you're throwing a javelin, it kind of forces you to. It's like you're squaring up your fucking throwing motion. Yeah, and it's not like you're all over the place. It's just kind of. You're also not it's whipping. A limited, it's a limited movement. Yeah. Well, you're also like when you're, when you're pitching, you're yeah, you're whipping your arm, right? Well, you're not really doing that with the javelin. You're but you're getting the the rep in of throwing, but you're not you know whipping your shit around like a maniac. Yeah, I forgot what this guy's like average average uh, velocity for his fastball is, but even so, his frame is five ten and probably like a hundred and ninety something pounds. But yeah, he can probably throw some gas. Yeah. So. Good for him. I guess all the unorthodox like training methods that he's developed to. Yeah. Uh, the only problem is as many occurrences have occurred with uh, with the uh, Japanese baseball players. Yeah. Is that they don't play the same schedule as we. Yeah, do. that's that's true. They play on a weekly like for a pitcher. I think they go seven days rest as opposed to five. Yeah, that's so, going to be an, an adjustment. Plus, they also don't play 160 fucking. Two they games. don't. And also the ball, our balls are bigger, uh, <laughs> man. We need a, we need a, we need a soundbite for that. <laughs> it's true though. I mean, whatever ball, the, I think 
in Japan, the balls are smaller. I don't, I don't know what the the diameter of their ball is, but compared to ours, ours is a little bit. <laughs> so, bigger, so, what do they use in the World Baseball Classic? Do they use, they use the, the American the, the worldwide one? standard, or which whatever, is not which, ours, which is like the jet, probably closer to like the Japanese. So, a smaller baseball. Oh, that's interesting. I mean, it does make it fucking harder to hit in terms of you know you get, a, you get a little bit more of a grip on the ball. Too. Well, and you can throw harder. Yeah, I would imagine if you can, and you can make the ball do more shit if it's smaller. Yeah. All right. So, I mean, shit. Even though we played the Vince Scully soundbite, what do you, what do you, what do you got to say about the Angels? Because they just got a new uh, skipper. That's correct. They did, and this team has been fucking neutered, and and, and uh, it's going to be a hard season to watch. I wouldn't say it's been neutered. I don't think Shohei fucking was the 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 main fucking draw or whatever you want to call it or the main force behind the team because if he was obviously we would have been probably doing better but but he wasn't his, so. his war says otherwise but whatever yeah i mean it says otherwise because dude i don't know what his war is but he was probably one of the players that had among the highest if not the highest war that yeah. determines the value of the player to the team itself so if he yeah if he's uh, on the higher maybe, end maybe but again his other, all the rest of his stats on the whole time he played with us were not that great i mean he was under 300 fucking hitter and he was a fucking over three era as hey, a pitcher 270 is not fucking it's hey, not pedestrian if dude. you if no it is pedestrian it's fucking it's the fucking middle of the road all right i think 250 if you, is like if yeah. you want to be saying that you're oh all this shit everybody says about he's the greatest this of all time the greatest that of all time you can't be the greatest anything of all time if your batting average is under fucking 300 okay i'm sorry that's just not a fucking that's not possible i think i think 275 is a is above average hitting mm. and possibly bordering elite definitely not bordering elite yeah dude i i would definitely disagree with that i think that fucking that's like that's pedestrian that is the definition of pedestrian anything with a two in front of it pedestrian no so you're telling me 290 you're telling me 290 is not cutting it yeah hit the gym fucking work out more do something you better start fucking hitting better because guess what? The pitching is not that great. It's not that great. There have been some times in baseball when pitching was fucking insane. Mm-hmm. And yeah, guys were hitting under 300 because dudes were fucking hold, pitchers were holding an under fucking two ERA on average. So if you're going to fucking have that level of pitching, obviously it's going to make the batting averages suffer. So sure, maybe that's a little understandable, but the pitching in the MLB right now is not fucking the best it's ever been it's it's pretty good but it's not fucking to the level that these guys should be hitting i just think dudes don't know how to fucking hit anymore i i've seen a lot of these guys and listen sure i'm not a fucking professional athlete so this is me fucking stating my opinion playing yeah armchair armchair baseball baseball guy but and again obviously people want to say oh well if you would have fucking known if you if you knew so much why didn't you fucking make it well uh maybe i couldn't just do it for myself all right like maybe that's what it is but Again, I can see a lot of shit that these guys do, and you can see a lot of holes in their fucking swings that I don't understand how professional teams are not straight taking advantage of this shit. And dudes are fucking getting bullshit fucking hits. Now, granted, this does not apply to everybody, all right? But there's a lot of dudes that are just skating by right now, getting little fucking eh, bleeders with their shitty swings, hitting bad pitches, and they're just, just skating by with a fucking, like you said, a 260 average, right, on the season. Just skating by with little horse shit, little hits, not a fucking contributing. Two sixty. <clears throat> ah, sure. By today's standards, sure. Okay, maybe it's serviceable, but I still think that's bullshit. I think that's horse shit. I think that if dudes knew how to hit better, this wouldn't be a fucking problem. All right, I, I know we've basically gone off the rails at this point. Off the rails with what? Well, we were talking about what are baseball. Yeah, but we were talking oh, about shit. Like, that's the, right. <laughs> we were talking about the Angels. Yeah, yeah. All right, but shit. Well, while we're off the rails, yeah, go for it. Uh, the 2025. I'm excited for this class. The Hall of Fame class? The Hall of Fame class. The first ballot for uh, 2025. Who's uh, who's on this one? Well, some of the, the names you might know. Yeah. One of my favorites. Chili Cheese Sabathia. Oh, yeah, man. Big big chungus, dude. My fav- One of my favorite... I hope Pitcher. he fucking gets first ballot. I hope he gets yeah, it. Yeah, he got, he got 3,000 3, strikeouts, so I think even with that, like just that alone would oh, be yeah. enough to get you in. 
because uh, there's only been 20 pitchers, 19 pitchers that have gotten 3,000 strikeouts. Yeah, that's that's a very elite club to be in. You want to know who's a guarantee, though, for me? Like, I, I think CC gets in. CC Sabathia gets in barely. Yeah. But I think somebody that's a shoe in for 2025, Ichiro Suzuki. Oh, 100%. Oh, oh my! Oh, oh my God! Yo! Good old Ichiro Suzuki, yeah. See, man. This is why we need a Jamie. Yeah, we need we need a gem. God Jamie. damn it! Uh, you want to know something real interesting? I do. Oh no! I I I can't tell from here. Shit, where is it? It's right there. Didn't know it's the orange one. Orange one. All right, cool. Would you like to know about a little interesting fun fact of Ichiro Suzuki? Oh, I would. Oh, you didn't know? So, in the very very earliest beginnings of his career, uh-huh. he was batting under 300. Yeah. And I think probably in his third at bat, in his first game, he never went under 300 again. So, for his entire career, from the start of his career, maybe had a 290 fucking batting yeah, yeah. average. After his third or fourth at bat on his first game, never fucking went under 300. As far as batting average goes. That's the guy who knows how to hit right there. Yeah, dude. Fucking amazing. Yeah, that's pretty sweet. That's, that's a good stat. Never, never, won, never won a World Series, but as a hitter, fucking amazing. Oh, yeah. I think he gets in because I don't remember if he was the first Japanese player to come play in the U.S., but probably one of the most impactful. Oh yeah, definitely. So I think he gets in one other person that I think also gets in simply because he won two, two world series. And I think his batting average is around like two ninety nine or two ninety. So, uh, I don't know. I don't know how you feel about this one. I don't know if you followed the Boston Red Sox, but Dustin Pedroia, uh, Oh the, yeah. The Boston Red Sox. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't remember. Was he? I'm trying to remember his stats. I'll look it up real quick on baseball reference just to. Yeah. Just to fucking. But I think he's a two time World Series winner. This is when they broke out. Again, for like the second time in the 2010s. Yeah, because they had 2000. I think 2004 was the year that they won it or 2007, 2004, 2007, I think is roughly. Yeah, I don't remember the Boston World Series wins, but let me just look up what what years but Dustin Pedroia ended up winning. So he played from 2006 to 2007. So the 2007 win I think was the one. Yeah. Let's see. Uh Oh, they got Hanley Ramirez on here. Yeah. He's a, he's a first timer, first year ballot. Oh man, final year on the ballot, Billy Wagner. Billy Wagner? Final year that he can be on the ballot, man. So if he gets in, or he gets in or he doesn't. Uh, let's see. So his total is as far as career numbers go, he batted 299. Is that still beneath you? Yeah, man. If you can break 300, you can get fucked. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he hit 140. Oh, shit. That's not very good. More, more of a contact hitter, I suppose. Four hundred forty 140 dingers. How long was his career? Uh, from 2006 to 2019. So his career ended like five years ago. Okay. So he, he went for like roughly 15 years or 14 years, 13, something like that. 14 years. Yeah. 14 years, yeah okay. Uh, batted 299. And, uh, I don't know what his fielding numbers were. Whoop. Fuck. He played second base, but how I many hits did he get? How many hits? Yeah. Did he win any gold gloves? Um, uh, he was a, th- let's see. Uh, Two World Series. Okay. One MVP. Of okay. Rookie of the Year, full time four time gold glover. Okay. A silver slugger. And uh apparently a Wilson overall defensive player. Uh Wilson overall it it's uh it's chopped off. I can't say no, right. but some MVP, kind of defense player award. AL, I think he got an AL MVP. Okay. Rookie of the year, two time World Series champion four-time gold glover and a silver slugger. Does that warrant a hall of fame career? 
I don't know, man, with a 299 batting average. I just, I don't know. Oh my God, dude, a point. A, 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 hey, if it was 300, I might not really have an argument here against against it. This is his what year? Is, is this is for sure? is his first year on the Hall of Fame ballot? So I don't think he gets in this year. You don't think so? No, I think it. I think it takes him two or three years. All right. Well, how about we do CC Sabathia next? Yeah, let's see. Let's see him. Ooh, also another final year on the ballot. Manny Ramirez. He ain't getting in. Nah, he's definitely not getting in with his fucking PED violations yeah. and all that shit. They're they're pretty pretty staunch about that shit. All right. CC's <laughs> numbers aren't. You know they're not great off the charts. Yeah, okay. Numbers, but his career, his career ERA was three point seven four. It's a little on the it's a little high side. side, little little little, little, little chunky, side, yeah. little chungusy, as they say. Yeah. Um, wins, losses, two hundred fifty wins, one hundred sixty one losses. Won a Cy Young Award. Okay, that's, that's six no time All Star. Okay, a two thousand nine World Series champion. Um. But the real, like to me, the real number that stands out is being one of nineteen players to get yeah. three thousand strikeouts. That's three, the only thing he needs. That's but, that'll get him in. That gets yeah. him in. That that's all you need. Doesn't matter what his ERA was. Doesn't matter fucking any other shit. If you are one of nineteen guys in the history of baseball to get three thousand strikeouts, strikeouts, your ass is in the Hall of Fame. It doesn't yeah. fucking matter. Yeah, what else that, you did? You figure maybe some guys are going to have some <clears throat> down seasons where they have yeah like. Their ERAs go up or they fluctuate, you know, and then that effect that does affect your overall, you know, batting average. And listen, you or uh, ERA. Yeah. It's same. I mean, the same thing can be said for the batting average. I mean, yes, yeah, sometimes you have a good year, but Christ, I mean, they play again. They play a hundred. If you're hitting, you're usually playing a hundred and twenty games at least. I would say probably yeah, you're playing a lot. You're playing a lot of games, so uh, sure uh, that could that could fluctuate. Maybe you have a bad year or two. Same thing with pitching. I mean, yeah, you're only pitching every five days, so I mean, you're throwing what maybe thirty games a year. Mm-hmm somewhere around there that number so you know yeah sometimes you have a bad fucking go of it and you go through a weird fucking basically listen i i know baseball it's very superstitious it's it's probably fucking the most superstitious sport not shaving your beard on your face or maybe even your nuts uh, oh it's like not changing your <laughs> jock strap or wearing the same uniform every fucking day okay i will say without that's, washing it that's like one of my i know mm. other sports have their superstitions about what it, what you can and can't do yeah but i love I love all the shit that goes on in baseball in terms of like super superstitions. I know the beard one is kind of a that's like a every sport pretty much it's like the playoff beard essentially. Like and then for the Angels, it was like the rally monkey, the or goddamn rally, rally monkey. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, and then if you look at, I mean, shit. Some of them we we used to get crazy with them, man. We would do, oh man, if one guy had his fucking batting glove in his right back pocket and one thumb was hanging out, it was and cursed. he got a hit. No, if you got like a hit, oh man. You got to fucking do that every single time. And then you would literally do it. And, t- and then if you fucking didn't do something right. Oh, man, fuck. I fucked it up. Or, yeah, if you are up to bat and like say you had something and you got hit by a pitch. Oh, no, you have to do everything different the next time you go up mm-hmm. or else you're going to fucking just be in a slump like a motherfucker. Like you're not going to hit a ball again for the rest of your fucking life. And you're going to go oh for, for, for oh for forever is what we used to call it. Like, but yeah, dude, there's just anything stupid that you could imagine. Like, yeah. All right, let's go. Let's go on a quick tangent. Yeah, yeah, let's do it. All right. So when you were batting, yeah, and you had you were go, getting on a bad streak, yeah. What did you do? Because I've heard Pete Rose say when things aren't working out, you <coughs> go to the front of the box, you go to the back of the box, you go to the deepest corner, you go to the other, yeah, yeah the front corner. You choke up, you choke down, you try to. Yeah, try you just you, well, you literally try everything. Yeah, and. A lot of the times, one of the things that I would do is when I was going through one of the main reasons when I would go through little phases of fucking up, it would be because I was getting too far ahead of myself and I'd start swinging at dumb shit. And so I would just tell myself, okay, the first thing we're going to do is we're not swinging this fucking bat until he throws a strike. We're going to make this fuck face throw a strike. Cool. We'll see what happens. So, you know, usually you're in the count. Eh. Sometimes they'll throw one right down the right, a meaty one right down the middle. But no, man, you got to just be disciplined and you got to fucking you got to stick with the plan. OK, and then see what see where it goes. And then shit, if that doesn't work and you still can't fucking do shit, then all right, cool. Now you need to go back and you need to do some more fucking BP. You need to fucking take some more fucking pitches and see what the hell you're doing and why you're swinging at this dumb shit. And then really, I would just be like, OK, if I if I thought anything was above or whatever, like the the 
just the bottom of the letters, I'm not fucking swinging at it. Well, where was your hot spot for the strike? <clears throat> for me, it was inside and down, inside and low, like low and inside. That was my, if I got anything low and inside or really anything on the inside half of the plate, you hit it, gone. You hit it, it was gone. You hit it on the inside like, like an oppo. No, so, oppo. okay, so like, when, because I, I, okay, I hit left handed, right? Even though I oh, throw right handed. Okay, never mind. That, that, so, that explains it. Okay. Yeah. So for me, it's yeah. that, that was perfect inside and anything like knee between the knees and the belt. Oh, mm. dude, if I, if, if you threw that inside on the inside half of the plate, it's gone. It's going 800 fucking feet. And I remember we used to do, there was this field we played at that had no fucking fence. Mm. And I would literally hit these things like 400 fucking feet. And mm. I'd have to run my ass fucking all the way around because they wouldn't just give you the dinger. You had to fucking run the entire bases to get the fucking home run. So you had to earn it and it was a pain in my ass, but and yeah, where, man, where was your, where was your spot in the batter's box? Uh, I liked to stand. Okay. So the batter's box is generally pretty even, right? It's like a rectangle or a, a half of a rectangle around the plate. It's pretty symmetrical. So what I would do is I would literally straddle the plate. So basically my, my stance was like shoulder width apart. Mm -hmm. So I'd basically straddle, be straddling the plate. So my back foot would be essentially on par or just past the uh, tip of the rear of home plate. And then my front foot would be either right on or just past the front of the part of home plate, the front part of home plate. And then I like to position myself right in the middle of the fucking box in the middle. Yeah. So so what I would do is I would take my bat. Cause I, I swung a, I liked to swing a shorter bat than a lot of other people usually. So I, I, so I, I liked a 29 inch, like between 29 and 30. Oh, I inches. thought you meant choking, choking up. No, no, I, I don't, I didn't, I never choked up, never did any of that stuff. I just liked the bat shorter. So I would get a, cause it, I felt like you could get more velocity on the swing. Mm. And so I would like either between a 29 or a 30 inch bat, preferably closer to 29 inches. Mm. And so I would literally take my bat. And I would stick it out and I would just go down and touch the end of fucking home plate, like the opposite end. And that's where I knew, okay, I'm in the right fucking spot. If I could do that, I'm in the right spot. I can cover the entire fucking plate with the swing Mm -hmm. and I can fucking hit anything on the inside, outside, up, down, anywhere in the strike zone that this dickhead behind me in Mm -hmm. in blue is going to call. I can fucking hit it. So that was my fucking strategy, I guess. Do you have any routines that, because, uh, Somebody famous that was notorious for taking up a fucking shitload of time. <laughs> Nomar Garcia Parra. Oh, yeah, yeah. He used to fucking do the gloves. Yeah, do all, do this all shit. the bullshit. Did all right. you, did you have the other thing? Did, so, did, yeah. Never fucking wore batting gloves in my entire life. I fucking hate batting gloves. I feel like, and I'll equate this now, I didn't have this equation necessarily all the way back then when I first started doing it, but it's like fucking having sex with a condom on. It's it just doesn't feel good to me. Like gloves, like some dudes love that shit. Mm-hmm. I can't stand no fucking, Barry Bonds brace. Nope, I didn't wear shit. I'm wearing fucking. A lot of guys wear that stupid little thing on your foot when you foul balls off. Oh right. Hey man, if you're dumb enough and you fuck up and you hit a foul ball into your mm-hmm. own foot, you deserve it. All right, that's that's the, that's punishment. That's the way I looked at it. Yeah. And so I would literally fucking just take my hands, fucking on the bat, raw, fucking nothing. And then I would go up. I'd do that thing where I'd fucking touch the end of the plate and then I'd touch the inside of the plate and then I'd touch either the back or the front of the plate. And it would depend on my superstition of the day, which order I would do it in. But whatever I did it in and I got to hit that first at bat, I had to do it every single time exactly the same, like literally like OCD. This is how OCD gets started. It's fucking playing baseball. Baseball, yeah. And I would like literally walk in like I'd I'd stand up. I'd walk up from the batter's box. I would literally do the fucking Triple H thing where I'd spit a bunch of water like an asshole. Mm. And then I'd fucking just I wouldn't look at the pitcher. I would not look at him. I just stare down the catcher and the umpire and I would just have my bat in my hands like this. And I just fucking wiggle my fingers and I just walk and I just stare. Mm. And then I would get into the box and I would do that thing. I touch the end of the plate, touch the inside, top or bottom, whatever the order of the day was. Mm. And then I'd fucking turn and look at the pitcher and I just fucking stare at him. And then I'd set my shit up. I'd get my, my, in my stance and then I'd just wait and I just wait. And once he started his motion, once he got about halfway through it, cause I, at this point I already been watching the motherfucker throw. Cause I'm never, I was never the first guy to fucking go up and hit. So I'd already been watching this motherfucker throw for two, three, four batters, depending on where I'm at in the order. Mm-hmm. 
And so I'd see this fucking dude. I didn't know his fucking routine, fucking top to bottom. I know everything about him. I would have done basically uh, before Google. I would have <laughs> I went in the phone book and found his fucking home address. Like, you know, <laughs> I did all my research on these motherfuckers uh, just by watching them pitch. And then I'd be like, OK, cool. I know exactly what this motherfucker's doing. So when he'd get about halfway through his 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 motion, mm-hmm. I would I would fucking take the bat off my shoulder and I'd kind of just load up a little bit and then I'd just wait and it would be just timed perfectly where I would start moving forward as the ball was coming at me mm-hmm. and it would either be I would either just stop because I wasn't going to hit it or I'm fucking continuing the forward motion and I'm fucking swinging and I'm I'm hitting this fucker. Yeah. So that was pretty much my routine for fucking as batting. Far, yeah. As far as a uh, swing goes, was there somebody you like to emulate? Somebody I thought was a lot of fun because I thought what he kind of did was stupid, but mm-hmm. maybe it was a metronome for the pitch, like the pitch coming Gary Sheffield when he would do the, Oh, I hate that when shit. He, when he, when he, yeah. He'd do that little dance and then he'd yeah. pick up his fucking leg and then fucking yeah. like he was pitching and then he'd fucking swing. I hate that shit to me. And uh, Barry Bonds used to do it as well. Oh yeah. Yeah. I to like, and again, everybody's different. Right. And listen, I, I can't say that, that that's fucking the worst thing you could ever fucking possibly do because well, granted Barry Bonds did all the steroids, but he still fucking broke records, okay, with that stupid ass swing. I think that if you have the fundamentals down, mm-hmm. then you can start playing with doing dumb shit like that. But I saw a lot of dudes that did not have the fundamentals down that would be doing dumb shit like that, where they'd be like fucking moving around and and, and all you're doing is just throwing your eye off the fucking what what's happening because you're moving your shit around. And then if your timing is not right, because that's what it's about, that what a lot of people don't realize is they're doing that. It's a timing mechanism. It's a timing mechanism. We're like me, the load up. OK, I'm timing. That's me timing this ball coming at me. So I know when I'm going to start swinging and going <coughs> for them. Barry Bonds, I, I imagine that's likely what it is. It's a it's a timing mechanism. And so then you same thing. With, that's a timing mechanism to get them fucking ready to hit the ball. And granted, once you start the timing mechanism, though, once you become reliant on that, you're either you're committed basically. Once you start it, you're either if you decide you're going to swing, there's no stopping it. So even if it's a pitch that's maybe not that great, or maybe you kind of undercut and you drop your back shoulder a little bit, or you do something, if you don't do everything perfect, then you're either going to pop it up, you're going to hit a weak fly ball, you're going to miss completely. There's so many fucking or so much margin for error when you're doing all this extra superfluous shit. Mm -hmm. So I was, I liked to remain very simple and I liked to just fucking be nice, calm, quick, easy, and, and done and not fucking doing all this extra. I, I, you know, like I said, I saw a lot of dudes, the dudes that I know that made it to pro baseball did a lot of dumb shit like that when hitting. And Hey, listen, I didn't think that it was uh, worthwhile, but whatever, dude, they made it. I didn't. So I, you know, fuck good for them, I guess. So, even though I still think it's fucking stupid as shit and it's teaching to me, it's teaching the younger generation wrong out. fundamentals because yeah, unless you're making a million, when you're making a million dollars a year, you can fucking do whatever you want. All right. You can swing how you can be an asshole and swing however you want. Right. But t- you ain't doing that now right here where at the level we're at, we're, we're fucking either making no money or fucking very little. So you need to fucking give your balls a tug and fucking do it right. Do the fundamentals. You know, did you, uh, did you read Ted Williams book? I did. I have it. I still have it. The art of hitting. Yeah, that's that's why that's why I think three hundred is fucking the standard. I think that should be the minimum standard. His numbers were fucking insane. Yeah, because he knew how to hit. I, I don't remember what his batting average was like in his lifetime. I think he had a season where he hit four hundred. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I'm pretty sure he did. So yeah, Ted Williams. That that was a, that was a guy I looked up to for you know hitting. Like I said, that book I still have somewhere upstairs the original fucking copy of the art of hitting with all the fucking manual the pictures and all that shit yeah and it's a it's a great fucking book anybody that's playing baseball if you're in a slump and you've never read that book give that book a fucking read and i guarantee you you will fucking fix your fix fix your your shit yeah and then if you fuck up after that it's because you fucked up not because the the shit was wrong it's because you fucked it up you're a fucking idiot and you're stupid yeah (laughs) (laughs) Oh man, that's fucking great. Where, where are we at? Uh, fifty three and a half minutes, or a little All over. Right, shit. Well, I guess we could talk about. I mean, if you have anything to say about the Angels and where? You oh think yeah, uh, what's his last. name? Uh, yeah, <laughs> definitely. Ron, uh, what's his name? Ron uh, Washington, right? Yeah, he's the new head coach of the Angels, and I just have to say that I like his fucking attitude because he comes out his first press conference 
And he does that fucking uh, Yoshinobu whatever thing when he's like, when he says, oh, Cubs want to win today or whatever he says. He basically comes out and he says, he just his favors and he just says, the Angels are going to win a World Series in 2024. And he just fucking <laughs> walks away. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that's fucking dope. I like I like his attitude. I like his style. I like his spunk. I mean, listen, he he, he took the, the Braves to, uh, uh, he got the Braves a ring in 2021, I think it was. So I I don't think that's going to happen for the Angels this year. The Angels obviously have a large market hole with Shohei Otani, the the draw essentially being gone. In terms of talent, uh, I do think that, unfortunately, Mike Trout, I mean, hey, listen, he's he is like the gentleman's fucking baseball player. Like, he's that prime example of a good old American baseball fucking guy, I guess, right? He's wholesome. He fucking, you know... I, <laughs> I don't think that he's. I think his his career is shortly coming to an end here. I feel like. Yeah, he's had a little string of uh, injuries. Yes, in, like the last three years. Correct, and he's not he's not really putting out the numbers like he used to. So, the Angels need to fucking figure it out. They need to let him go. Like they need to do him a service. They and need trade to trade him. Right. Well, they need to free up some salary cap. Is what they need to do because they need to invest in younger guys. And worst contract, the two worst contracts that they signed. Well, there's a number of them. Yeah, Josh Hamilton back in like the two early, I think the late two thousands, early twenty tens. Yeah, uh, Albert Pujols. That I mean, was a fucking terrible ten years for I don't know how. I think it was like three hundred. Yeah, million. it was like three fifty or something like that. Anthony Rendon for I think ten years, and he's only played I think a third of the season. Yeah, yeah, basically. They need to get rid of that, all that shit. Nobody's going to take them. They have to take, they have to eat that. Yeah. So that's money that's already spent. So I think the angels are probably looking at 2030 being the year that we will actually have, you know, come back and, you know, ha- be contenders again. I think it takes another six fucking seasons or five ish to six seasons. Hey, you can go with the Houston Astros method and just lose for several years and just yeah. develop the all star team. Just get everyone <clears throat> draft picks and yeah, just basically have a dynasty. Which well, yeah. something of a dynasty. I mean, yeah, at this point, that's probably what's going to happen. I think dive. Oh, the, and and it sucks because I mean, yeah. Listen, also, uh, Ron Washington's like eighty fucking years old, so. I don't think he's going to be coaching for five years. He's just the interim guy to let them suck. Cause he's like, fuck it. This is a payday and I ain't going to do anything with these assholes. Like they're, they're giving me nothing to work with. If he, if they give him, if, uh, if he has a feasible season, he keeps he'll come contract, back next year. He'll keep his contract. And maybe he'll just be above 500. Well, I'll say this, uh, that would be an accomplishment in and of itself because in the last five years, the angels haven't even been above 500 on a season. So if he gets them above 500, that's already an improvement. Mm -hmm. And I would say that that's going to be putting us on track to the right direction. We're still going to be dead fucking last, Mm -hmm. which it is what it is, right? I mean, yeah, I can sit here and bitch and complain about it, but ownership is fucking garbage. Does uh, fucking what's his name? Doesn't want to do anything. Artie Moreno. Artie Moreno wanted the team to be in LA. Um, Christ, I, I, I kind of wish he'd fucking make a deal with the fucking Pachanga or somebody and just move him out here. Move him out here? Yeah, like to, towards us and then they're closer to us, I guess. And I, you know, shit, build a stadium. Fuck it. Who cares? Go back to being the California Angels. Yeah, I, that'd be sweet as shit. And this, oh, this whole LA business, LA, I, it needs to be done. Done. It needs to be done. The Los Angeles Angels, Angels. That's that's, that's, that's like, that's the most, it's, or, it's, yeah, the, the, it's the, the, the Angels, it's the Angels, Angels. Angels. This yeah, is what it is. It's what fucking it is, yeah. stupid as shit. And I fucking hate it. Yeah. And that's when we really started lost. That's when we lost our way. When, when when he did that, that's when we really started going downhill. No amount of Shohei Otani, no amount of any fucking foreign signings, Japanese guys, none of that shit is going to make that go away. Mm-hmm. That stain of the stupidest name in fucking professional sports, really. I mean, it doesn't make any sense. So I think we're we're probably a good five years out before we're actual contenders again for anything and you know what it's cool because i'll enjoy it because that just means ticket prices are gonna Two be for dirt one fucking shit, cheap man yeah Two for one, i'll get to go to as many angel games because i listen i just love angel stadium i think it's a great fucking stadium um it's fucking cool uh i i like going there so we well, all right yeah i'm just trying to trying to make out the fucking <laughs> the sound bites I'm, i can't I know, I know you're giving me fucking dirty looks. I am, because I'm like, what are you doing? Them. I didn't oh, memorize it. All right, well, first whatever. Go, but Yeah, whatever, it's fine. But anyways. Fun fact. 
you have a you have a fun fact for us? Oh yeah, since we're oh, you back, didn't know. Since we're bringing back uh, the subject of the Boston Red Sox, we yeah, about, briefly about Ted Williams. If you go to Costco or I think Sam's Club over there, they're offering two for one tickets for the the Boston Red Sox at at Sam's Club or, or Costco? Costco. One of those two. Man, I wish they'd do that here with the Angels. Fuck. Yeah. Two for one tickets, huh? That's a pretty good deal. It is a pretty good deal. I mean, it's not like you're going to go there and expect the fucking Red Sox to yeah, contend. No. That, that whole fucking league, dude. So recently what happened, I can't even get to the Dodgers yet. Um, <laughs> yeah, so Baltimore Orioles got bought out for, I think, $4 billion. Yeah. Part of the ownership or the organization that owns the Baltimore Orioles now, they got Cal Ripken. It's oh. like some kind of advisory position. I'm like, yeah, damn, nice. dude, I haven't heard that fucking name in forever, dude. Mr. 3000. Yeah, man. I don't know how many consecutive games he played. I think he played like 2,000 consecutive. Can you imagine playing uh, an entire, mostly your entire career without ever fucking getting injured, dude? That's like a luxury. That's a fucking, that's not even a luxury. That's a fucking, that's, that's a, a miracle. Prob- <laughs> I mean, Jesus Christ. Anyways, um, I got to say, man. As far as being a Dodger, I'll try to I'll try to keep it real too. Nah, just fucking go for it. I I droned on about the Angels. I mean, I was droning on mainly about myself and baseball, but you asked the question, so. <laughs> um, I gotta say, this is probably one of the most exciting teams I've ever witnessed in my entire life. You, even if it doesn't amount to shit, just the notoriety, the names. Uh, because I mean, shit, dude, I've been a Dodger fan for fucking um, as long as I can remember, as as young as I can remember, and. A lot of those years weren't that great, dude. I mean, the 90s were pretty much dog shit for the Dodgers. I remember being a big Hideo Nomo fan. Yeah. Um, And then it only started getting good until the fucking McCourts were kicked out as owners. And yeah, yeah. I mean, even like when Fox Fox Sports owned the Dodgers, I think at one point, Paul D. Podesta, um, those years were kind of horrendous, too. I mean, we ended up losing to Chicago like numerous times and. Uh, or even even St. Louis. St. Louis had really good years during the two two thousands, early twenty tens. Uh, yeah, yeah. But it's only gotten better from like twenty eleven and beyond, and it never really felt like a whole super team had been built together. Not that I had ever imagined the fucking Dodgers ever being the Yankees at this point, but that's basically what they are. They're the fucking Yankees. Yeah. Um. And then it, it has been nice to see Clayton Kershaw. I don't know how to word this. <laughs> the dude sucks in the playoffs, right? Yeah. He has like you mean he chokes in the negative, playoffs? He has like a plus one hundred fucking ERA un, yeah. unreal unreal choke artist, dude. There's no way to put it. <laughs> no but, way to put it. But he signed a one year deal with a whole bunch of incentives. And I thought maybe he would take the chance and go to Texas to wrap up his career just to say he could play he played close to home and yeah maybe maybe to say also they played on the same team as nolan ryan i don't i don't know if that's kind of a thing for him that he hey, maybe um but he signed with the team again and now he's 56 strikeouts away from 3000 he's not going to come back until august so i don't know how many starts that is but he needs to get probably around 10 starts to get five strikeouts a game, or maybe it's even shorter than that, depending on how well he plays. I mean, he can get like eight or seven strikeouts in a game. I'm hoping. And then by this, whatever happens, regardless of this year, if they make it the playoffs or not, he gets 3000. If he calls it a year or calls it a, calls it a career. I'm like, I'm happy with that. Cause then he got to 3000. His ERA, I think is like two points, something stupid, crazy numbers as far as a regular season goes, but not, not clutch in the playoffs, but (laughs) yeah, I mean, shit, me being excited, biggest reason, obviously the acquisition of both Yoshinobu Yamamoto and, uh, and, uh, Shohei Otani. I know you have strong feelings about that. (sighs) That's correct. I do. If you want to say anything about that. Yeah, no, I I think he's a traitor. (laughs) Shohei Otani is a fucking traitor amongst traitors. I think uh, I think he doesn't play baseball for the love of sport. I think he does it for money. I think he's the David Ortiz. I think he's gonna not. Be, I don't think he's gonna pitch a fucking day in his life. You think not. he's just gonna fucking hit? He's gonna be the DH. And that's it. Yeah, I, I think, think he's, I think he's gonna be a David Ortiz yep. type of guy. I think you might be right. He's gonna spend the rest of his career fucking playing DH, which is I think that's the only reason he's a Dodger. 
is because of the fact that the DH was incorporated to the NL. It worked out great. I mean, it's cool, but fuck, man, I I kind of miss the the division between AL and NL. Like, so there was, I. I I like the strategy of the NL having pitch hitting mm-hmm. and all that shit. Now it's all kind of homogenous. So I miss that. I miss it a little bit. Yeah, and then during the playoff, like in the World Series, they would have to like whatever stadium you were at. That was the rules you played, which was fucking cool, man. That was a cool thing of oh man, AL pitchers had to hit in the World Series when they were at the opposing team's field. Yeah, and then uh, interleague play, dude. I oh yeah, I love it. It's cool to see the Yankees play the Dodgers during the regular season, but now it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter now because it's like um, it it demeans the the two leagues playing each other now. Yeah. It it just uh, I mean, if I wanted to see the Yankees play the Dodgers in a World Series, I want to see it happen there. I don't want to have, I don't want them to fucking have a few games play amongst each other. Like yeah. I want to know what if, what if, like what's gonna happen. Right, but, right. I don't know. We're moved moving away from that. But anyways, uh, yeah. Uh, I'm guessing Dodgers fall just short in the 24, 24 season. I think they lose in the NLCS like every other season. Uh, and then 2025 is the year that they ultimately go to the World Series and win it because the plot, much like the Travis Travis Kelsey, oh yeah, uh, Taylor Swift uh, plot armor. Yeah, the Dodgers have now accumulated so many main characters, and now they are essentially the New England Patriots, where people were willing to take one year, two year contracts and not be offered guaranteed money, but more incentives just to play on the fucking team. Yeah. Guys that are probably in their twilight years or end of their careers just to get a fucking ring on their name. And uh, oh, yeah. this, is be- this is beautiful. This is a beautiful time. For- this is probably the best timeline for the Dodgers. And I can't, I beat off to it. I, be- I beat off to Shohei announcing his uh, signing to the Dodgers. And Yoshinobu, oh man, my dick was raw. <laughs> you know, I hope electricity stops working before fucking that happens. <laughs> before 2025 when the Dodgers get their fucking due. Yeah. I hope they just decide, you know what? We're going to cancel baseball. This is <laughs> baseball's done. We're never doing this again. <laughs> yeah. That would be that would be, be fucking uh, hilarious. That would be uh it's like, oh, um everything's canceled. Uh, end times are here and uh Sorry. Sorry, Sorry Dodgers. <laughs> Sorry, we just spent all this money and now we can't use it. Oh, another another fun fact about uh, you know, you may that you may not know, Orange. Orange. Oh, you didn't know. We're working is. on it, man. Yeah, we're getting there. It's actually me well, more than when anything. I yell out the color, it's yeah. like you, you just look at the pad, the color right, of it. You got a fun fact? I do. Cal Ripken Jr., right? His consecutive game streak, two thousand six hundred and thirty two games over more than sixteen seasons. Good lord. Wait, so did he play his did he play his entire All of career? them. All of them? As a fucking Baltimore Oriole. You're talking about Cal Ripken. Cal Ripken Jr. I want to have sex with your wife. All right. <laughs> what the I, fuck, Kurt Angle? Or I, Perk Angle? Jesus. I, we mentioned in the beginning, I, we we were forewarning you that Perk Angle might drop in, and apparently he wants to have sex with Cal Ripken's wife, who's probably in the AARP at this point. Yeah, but uncalled for. I mean, that we, is uncalled we, we're for. We're going to have him escorted out of you the You know building. what? That's it. Perk Angle. Just get the fuck out of here, Perk yeah. Angle. Just get out of here. I can't yeah. even believe this. I, I, I can't believe it. I'm, I'm fucking... We're, we're, I'm shocked and appalled right now. Yeah. I've never been speechless in my life. I'm I'm almost speechless. Apologies or our our sincerest apologies to no, our, well, our not not even no our sincerest apologies to Cal Ripken Jr.'s wife. Okay, yeah. that's that's who we should really be apologizing yeah. to on behalf of Perk Angle. Yeah, I I just I can't believe I can't believe this. Although yeah. I mean, she probably is an attractive lady, so I mean, maybe it's just, maybe she takes this as a compliment. Yeah, a dashing woman. Yes, yes, I, I would imagine. I don't know. I haven't seen her in a while, so I, <laughs> <laughs> maybe I'm making that up. Yeah. So but two thousand. What was the number again? Two thousand six hundred and thirty-two games. That is in unreal. A row. His entire career, yep, dude. His entire. Well, that wasn't his entire career. He went on to play a few more after that, but he basically just was like, "I need to end the streak." He's like, "I just need to end this" because he uh, he beat Lou Gehrig's was two thousand one hundred and something. And then he destroyed it by like over 500 and then said, all right, I don't think anybody's ever going to catch this. I need to take a break. <laughs> I might die. <laughs> Why not separate yourself further? Ne- make it a record nobody can ever touch, dude. Yeah. I mean, that's what he did. That's what he did. So there's no one that'll ever. It took him over. It, it's over 16 seasons in a row. There's no one playing every single game for 16 seasons in a row. That's never going to happen again. Mm-hmm. Never gonna happen again. So so much shit has gone wrong, and even even like the science has gotten better for how to protect yeah. players and stuff. But for somebody to do it like in the nineties and 
that's that was an impossibility. Yeah. You would feel like now, sure, maybe with the science and all that shit, they could maybe somebody could do that, but not not back then. How the fuck, man? Or even like the safety protocols of baseball itself. Like yeah. to, to say, oh, my arm feels a little funny. Oh, I mean, you can't dude, play you, for you six pitch until weeks. your fucking arm fell off. Oh, dude. back then, yeah. 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 You pitch until you fucking gotta get Tommy John surgery, and then you know what? You come back you and come six back to and eight. do it again. You come to six back in six to eight business weeks and you're gonna do it all over again. <laughs> Your fucking arm's gonna be fucking a spaghetti noodle. Dude. Yeah, we're gonna have to attach it with fucking pins, but who cares? You're gonna have to literally just use momentum to to throw your arm. We're gonna duct tape the ball to your fucking hand uh, so you can get it out, get after it. But all right, here here's another fun fact. Oh, you didn't know Randy Johnson, bird executioner. Oh yeah, yeah. Is a, a photographer. And if you can imagine what, what do you think his logo is? Oh, uh, it's probably the fucking bird, right? Is the, the exploding, exploding bird? bird? Yeah. Is the exploding bird photographs or something for photography? Yeah, the exploding bird is like his logo. <laughs> what if he just calls it bird murder photography? <laughs> bird murder. Does he take pictures of birds? Is that what? <laughs> yeah. And apparently Ken Griffey is a, a sports photographer as well. So that Ken Griffey Jr.? Yeah, they've, oh, they've, man, cool. they've been sighted together. Oh, uh, wow. Which is rather interesting that they, that was the choice. That was their choice after baseball. Yeah, I mean, shit. That's a good choice. Yeah, don't have to work. For, don't have to work for no man. Take do your own shit. Fuck, I'd do it. Hey, what, what do we had in terms of time? Uh, we've been going for like an hour and ten. Oh so fuck yeah, we're good dude. To go. First episode went off the rails. Talked about yep. a bunch of bunch what of dumb shit, dumb baseball shit. Perk Angle fucking oh, interrupted man. us. Fucking Perk Angle, what a piece of shit. Absolute piece of shit, dude. Can't Damn. can't believe it. never it's like happening the again. Scum of the earth. Yeah, yeah. We you know what? We just need to we need to kill that guy. <laughs> <laughs> Next time Perk Angle shows up, we're just taking him down. Yeah. So, anyways, uh, yeah. So, thanks for fucking listening. And this was a lot of fun. I think we're this. I think this podcast is gonna be fucking awesome. Yeah. So, I think, yeah. I don't know how the format will unfold. Maybe it'll be our own personal stories in sports and shit. And yeah. And uh, and obviously we'll talk about we'll talk about all, all yeah. the sports happenings and sh- such. Yeah, I agree. So uh, also there will be many more fucking sound bites for sure. That's and we're going to get a handle on on doing them correctly and hitting the right ones also. <laughs> yeah. So can you program the colors on this? Yeah, I can change the colors. Yeah, because that that might help a little bit too. Oh, colors. maybe. Yeah. So we can have distinct colors for each. OK, well we'll, well, we'll use color theory and we'll fucking figure that out later. Yeah. I mean, like I said, dude, first episode, we're still trying yeah. to figure shit out. You yeah. got to give us a shot. Yeah, you got to give us a chance, all right? <laughs> you cocksuckers, you got to fucking give us a chance. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, we don't even have an intro or an outro yet. So, yeah. I mean, this is raw. So, anyways. Consider yourself a day oneer. If yeah. You, if you're listening, throw, throw the ones up in our yeah. uh, in our profile. Acknowledge us yeah. on our profile by throwing up the ones. Yeah, so on Instagram, when the trailer for the episode drops, throw throw the ones up. Yeah. To let us know you're a day oneer. You're day oneer. And then, yeah, it'll be all good. And if you don't know where we're at, you can follow us on at Game Rage Magazine on Instagram and TikTok and Game Rage Mag on Twitter slash X. And if you want to just follow Adam for the crunchy grooves and the spicy memes, yeah. uh, he's at All Gas No Trash Official on Instagram. On Instagram, no spaces or none of that bullshit. And uh, you can go to obviously our website, GameRageMagazine.com, where we have a slew of other podcasts that are non-sports related one is sports related but it's sports entertainment sports related. entertainment <laughs> and uh if you want to know what our opinions on the taylor swift situation, oh yeah again yeah. go ahead and listen to uh the all gas no trash slash uh, slash game rage music episode number i think it's 27 yeah you can hear all about that so yep. anyways thanks for listening and we will fucking catch you on the next one